Hey, Rich. Bar bombs and mirror bombs. Hello. It should be Tuesday, July 28th, 20, 2020 at 4 17 p.m uh, i'm here with chris and luke this is car bombs and beer bongs so i don't know if you guys are going to be hearing this podcast or the live stream version the plan is is i'm going to have a live stream version and then edit it down into the podcast which will be weekly released and that's the gist of it so if you just listen to the podcast let me know what you think of the intro song that i got someone to make i've never done that before but i digress this will be about sports life college just something you can entertainly listen to weekly and it's always going to be helped with one of these guys right here i'll have i don't know if you guys want your social media tag below your names i mean uh, not yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, think about I'll think about it i'll think i'll throw it in the description if you <laughs> we'll want see. we'll see we'll see but either way i digress we have a list of things that we do want to talk about today and those go from football and this is like college football and nfl to basketball and as well as we have premier lacrosse and a bunch of other random topics that we'd like to get to but without further ado i think we need to segue luke over here to the left has all of the outline of what the fuck we're yeah. doing so if you want to tee us off over here so we can start all right this. so we'll start by talking about the nba season like the nba season is just coming back so obviously there's a lot to talk about um the first game start on the 30th i think so this Thursday, we've got the Jazz and the Pelicans and the Clippers and the Lakers. Those are the first two games okay. of the season. Jazz and the Pelicans we'll start with. I'm first off saying Pelicans win this. Zion has been hyped up all week. That's the only reason they did the restart and they didn't just go straight to the playoffs was because they wanted more Zion. So, big national TV game. The first game at 5.30 p.m., it'll be Zion. And Jazz, the, Jazz. the problem with the Jazz is I feel like there's some chemistry problems going on right there. Well, due to the maybe, fact, they have, maybe they've gotten over it. It's been a few months, but I don't know, man. The whole Rudy Gobert shit. And the Donovan Mitchell shit. I well, think yeah. they're beefing. They're beefing. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. But it'll be a close game. I, I'm with you. I think the Pelicans will take it. I think they have a great starting lineup. I do. I think they'll come through. So, yeah, betting odds, I would take. I don't. On all these games, I don't Pelicans know. Are you taking and overs? The first thing is, is Pelicans like, two and a half is a spread that I like. No, I, if I were, I would bet, take the I would, spread. Yeah, I would take the Pelicans two and a half in this game. I wouldn't bet any over or unders because I have no idea if this is going to be Pelicans high scoring or low record. scoring. Pelicans have a better record against the spread than the Jazz do this. Season. Though the whole thing comes down to is like, are these guys going to be in the best of shape? That's how, true. How are, how are they going to do with like four months of no basketball and like yeah, a month true. of getting ready? It's like they. It's definitely going to be interesting. I like the Pelicans. How many injuries are we going to see? Uh, well, uh, everybody's pretty much healthy. Yeah. Zion for looks now. In, looks for like now. For season. now. They've been saying that he like reworked his like, game from the ground up. For now, off. there is no injuries. But with them being out of shape and being rusty, we might see some cramps here and there. People might get injured. People might not be playing. You know, I mean, there's only eight games. So. We never know. We never. There's know. only eight games. There's not that many games. We'll see. This is really just about the Pelicans know that it's desperation mode because they're not in the playoffs right now and they're a few games back, so they got to win every game. The Jazz don't have as much to play for as the Pelicans do. The Jazz have the playoffs to focus on. Are the Jazz in the playoff already? Oh, yeah, the Jazz, well, the Jazz, the Jazz are in the playoffs. They are 41. sitting in fourth in the, in the West, and they've clinched the playoff spot. They're ten games ahead, of, or uh, nine so, and a half games ahead of Memphis. I like to take notes as a productive fucking human. Jazz versus Pelicans. Pelicans. We got the Pels taking this. Yeah, I agree. With the uh, uh, minus by, two and a half. Minus two and a half. So. And Clippers and Lakers is the other opening night game. Um, Clippers and Lakers. Um, Clippers and Lakers is the other opening night game. Lou Williams will not be playing for the Clippers. He will still be going quarantine. What's the spread of, on that one? Uh, Lakers by four. I like the, even though I like the Clippers roster, I think Lakers minus oh, four. Oh, I think I think the Lakers the are the better are, team. The Clippers are they're they're going through some interesting stuff right now. When Lou Williams went to that strip club to pick up wings. I mean, J.R. Smith dropped twenty six for seven from three point range. How many out of the three? What was his three point range? Six for seven. Six for seven? Yeah, the Six for on. seven. Isn't he like 34 too? Yeah, they just brought him on because Avery Bradley went out. And I like the Clippers, and I, I think they will have a great playoff run. I don't think so. I think I they're going to get either booted in the first or second round, I, which is like obvious. We like can, that, we'll talk about the playoffs later. We'll talk yeah. about the playoffs later. But yeah, um, 
This game, I like the Lakers to win it. Minus four, I think they'll cover. Just because the Clippers are missing their best bench scorer. And Through Montrose Harrell no, or Lou Williams? Williams. Lou Williams, because he he's not allowed to play because he's had to quarantine by himself because he left campus to go to that strip club. So he Jeff, he was, went to go get pick food. Up food. Pick up food. And just bumped into Jack Harlow by accident. Yeah, just by accident. By accident. Like. And then, but it wasn't actually Jack Harlow because Jack Harlow came out and said apparently it was an older post and he just missed him. Apparently. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was an older post. Lou Williams didn't do that. He just went there to pick up wings and apparently the wings there are really good. <laughs> Everybody said they were, so hey man, whatever. Uh, all right. Strip club wings. Um, what else do we have for opening weekend in the NBA? Um, opening weekend. Uh, so the next game, Friday, there's a ton of games. I don't know if I'm going to touch on all of them. I think I'm just going to talk about the big ones. The big ones. Do the um, uh, so big market. Celt- Celtics Bucks ESPN matchup. Okay. The first one of the doubleheader. Uh, Bucks are currently minus four and a half in that game against the Celtics. Bucks over the Celtics, I take that. I, I take Bucks four and a half. I'm a Celtics fan, and I take. Bucks I don't know. Four and a half. Would you take the plus four and a half? Do you think the Celtics can keep it close enough defensively against Giannis? No, no. We played them, and we, last time we played them, we almost came back and we lost by like five still, and that was months ago when the so, Celtics were playing good basketball. So we're gonna do minus four. Minus four and a half for the Bucks. Minus four and a half for the Bucks. Okay. Next one is the Rockets Mavericks. This one is an even pick 'em. Both at minus one ten. It's a very close game. I expect it to be. A What's very the close um? Game. I would um, do a teaser on that one. Do the uh, well. I don't know what the teaser odds are. I'm not I have on no idea. Website. I don't know if I really want. But like that is an interesting one to look. I at. I would go over on that one. I don't even care it, what the line the is. I would still two, over. The over under is two twenty six. A lot of points. I don't think it'll hit that because it's their first game back. They're yeah, I'd there. go under 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 two twenty six as the betting pick. Yeah, and I take. Game. I would take. I would take. The Mavs over the Rockets. Oh, I would too, but that's a pick. I would take the Mavs over the Rockets. That's a pick up, man. Is uh, Porzingis healthy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Their lineup is healthy completely. I'm taking Kristoff and Luka together. I'd take the Mavs over the Rockets in that game. I think it's a pick up, and I think it's really close. Um,. That but the over under I think it's going to go under because I just can't see these teams scoring a boatload of points in the first game back. I don't think anybody's going to be scoring a boatload of points in the first game back. At least no. not for the first couple. At least not for the first game or two. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It, it, they're they're rusty. They can't shoot. Obviously, defense comes back quicker than offense. All right. All right. And so then, I want to hear. I guess the, we can do Saturday's games. There's three games. There's four games on ESPN on Saturday. What are they? Um, Heat Nuggets, Jazz Thunder, Pelicans. Heat Nuggets. Clippers, I say the Heat straight and up. Raptors. Heat straight up. Heat as know, minus as, as two good. point dogs. That is is Jokic even playing? Yeah, he is. He is. Bobo is What's out the, uh, for that game though. Oh, he's out. Why? They say Bobo is out. I'm looking at the news to see why. It the says he's out. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm looking at the news. I'm not sure why it says he's out. But he's out for that game. But actually, Loki looks legit. How we got this running right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we actually like look like we. I'm we're gonna both look in up two what, different spots. I'm gonna look up really what not. Bobo's I know, I know. Like you can tell that we're looking at each other, but like yeah, it's like yeah, kind of yeah. cool that like. Hold I don't on. know. I'm gonna look up what Bobo's injuries are. <laughs> I just like watching the live stream right next to it. Yeah. Hold like, on a sec. We vary between one and three views viewers right now. I have like five guys who are like, um, like regular watchers, like named Jackson Mock, Andrew. Bubba okay, Fogo. Well, I don't see anything about Bobo being Mock. injured. <laughs> Jackson, <laughs> he isn't that good. <laughs> I don't see anything about Bobo being injured on the news, so I don't know why it's he's out. This is drug test. This is random drug testing. Yeah, for drugs. He's just doing steroids. <laughs> he's just doing steroids. Yeah. How would steroids help him, dude? Oh, okay, so so the thing is, when we talk about steroids, it's not actual like uh, most of the time. It's not like HGH. It's like uh, better endurance. It gives you yeah. better endurance, yeah. quicker recovery, and in, uh, injuries. Uh, it's uh to make you uh like your blood some like makes your blood vessels uh do something. It's like I did a whole video. It's it's different type of shit. It's not. It's like long uh more stamina, better endurance, uh quicker recovery time, uh leaner, make your muscles leaner, so you they're not as like weigh as much. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You're not like Barry Bonds pumping HGH, so you're just slugging. <laughs> Yeah, because he's really testosterone. Yeah, you're not. It's, it's, there might be some testosterone, but it's not like they're not trying to get like huge. They're trying to get you the leanest muscle possible. They're yeah. trying to get you down to the like least amount of body fat as possible. 
Yeah, and Barry Bonds just happened to be swollen yoked and be able to just rake. And well, that's like baseballs. that's like baseball. They're just trying to crush baseball, so that's yeah. just human growth hormones because that just makes you fucking yeah. jack. Not like Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong was different. He took a different type of steroids. Lance Armstrong was um besides blood doping, he like uh I'm pretty sure he would like dope his blood so he didn't get he couldn't like like he's, he could clean his blood, um but. What I think he was doing, he was um, pumping himself with, uh, what is it? It wasn't um, Adderall or anything. He, I think he was pumping himself with maybe like some sort of testosterone or something. I don't even know, but he... I'm not sure what the substance He never was. got... The thing is, is he never caught, got caught. He just came out and admitted. No, eventually people came out and said it. He was forced to come out and admit it. Oh, he was forced to come out and admit it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he was forced to come out and admit it, but... He had not been caught for a while, just like a lot of cyclists besides him who also did it. I mean, all sports, they cheat. I just oh, think yeah, legally yeah. you should just let everyone do uh, PEDs, take the risk, have it uh, like administered by a doctor. If everyone's doing uh, PEDs, it's not an advantage. I mean, I guess. <laughs> yeah, if everyone's doing... <laughs> I mean, I You're getting the highest I quality of sport. Everybody takes steroids. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I don't fucking know. I'm going to clip this into why. Why so should PEDs should be legal. Yeah. All uh, right, getting back on track with uh, yeah, uh, we Heat versus here. Nuggets. We're taking. I take the Heat. Um, I would also take the Heat yeah. in that game. Without uh, Bull dogs, Bull. Uh, it doesn't say anything about Bull being injured. So I mean, I mean Bull, Bull isn't a huge factor of that roster either way. But exactly, like, he's yeah. he may not really play much. If he plays, game. that's just a huge X factor. That maybe I uh, probably the Heat are favored in this game. I assume no, they're two point dogs. They're two point dogs. I would take the Heat either way. Yeah, Jazz right. Thunder. Thunder are one point favorites against the Jazz. I like the okay, so Oklahoma City Thunder. I like the Thunder. Game. I think Jazz are just not going to have a good fucking. They've already clinched the playoff spot. Both teams have, but the Jazz might take a little while to get. I like time. Shy and Chris Paul on the same team though. What's uh, that off spread though? Uh, one Thunder by one. Yeah, I, I, like I take the Thunder. I like I take the um, Pelicans and the Clippers. Clippers by four against the Pelicans. I take Clippers. On I'm this taking one. the Clippers over the Pelicans in that game oh, yeah. too. And the last national TV game of that day is, is Raptors, the Lakers, Lakers and the Raptors. The Raptors are four-point dogs against the Lakers coming into that game. I'm taking the Lakers. I think LeBron's mm-hmm. just going to be a dog. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. You think the Raptors are going to – the Ra- Raptors get the number one seed. Two seed. Two seed? Maybe. I, I don't see them I don't see frame. them winning, but maybe that four-point spread. Maybe they keep it really close. Maybe. It's not a lot of points to bet on because you got to think about garbage time free throws, but – I don't know. I don't know. I, that one's the one that I might take Raptors plus four in that game, especially if the spread changes and goes up. Maybe. All right. That's what I'm thinking on that one. You're taking the Raptors? Not to win, to cover. To cover the spread? Mm-hmm. Okay, Raptors cover the spread that's what on I'm Saturday's game. That's So That's those are the games for opening weekend. But yeah, that's our opening game, so I'm going to run it back right now. I got it right here. Jazz versus Pelicans, we got the Pelicans covering the two and a half spread. Yeah. yeah. Then we got the Clippers versus Lakers, Lakers covering the four and a half, four spread. That's not four and a half. Might be four and a half by the time you guys. And maybe it changes. This is still a few days in advance. Yeah. Then we got the Celtics versus Bucks, Bucks taking the four and a half spread. Rockets versus Mavs, Mavs winning that. And I'm saying under 226, if that's Mm -hmm. the total score. As of now, yeah. Then we got Heat versus Nuggets, take the Heat in that one. They're. Uh, two point dogs. Mm-hmm. I like that. Thunder versus Jazz. Take the Thunder. I just don't think the Jazz are gonna be. I just don't. There's like beef. I feel like there's some beef. I could. I could call it 100 percent beef. Maybe. Wrong, maybe but. it's over. Maybe it's squashed. But uh, something like that. Like they are starting to play again. They haven't really seen each other in a while. It is. It is interesting to see yeah. what goes on with the Jazz because there was clearly some tension a few months ago. We just don't know how much of that is still lingered. But. Exactly, no, 100%. So then there's the Pelicans versus Clippers. We're taking the Clippers there. They would have lost to the Lakers. They want to redempt themselves. Yeah. And they're going to win against that. Then Lakers versus Raptors. Raptors uh, lose, but they stay. They cover yeah, the spread. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it'll be a close game. The, the Raptors tend to match up well in the regular season with a lot of teams. Yeah. Um, this is a... Short regular season, the Lakers have a substantial lead in the Western Conference as the one seed. They might not be playing every night. LeBron might not be playing a ton of minutes at the end of the season, especially if they already beat the Clippers, the team that's, that's competing with them. In that's second. true. They, like, maybe they don't play. Maybe they don't play as hard. Maybe that is true. They might. Out. Maybe they still win. Maybe the Raptors will cover. That's what. I, that's my thinking for that yeah, game. Yeah, that's true. Maybe they play Kuzma more in the fourth quarter yeah. just um, to run the unit. So, what's the next segment we got up here? Uh, I have the playoff seeding. What do we think is going to be the final standings? What What do we have right now? What is the uh, current playoff standings? 
for our national TV games we predicted, well, the Lakers would be like six and a half games ahead of the Clippers. Um, the, for Bucks the first would, seed? Yeah, the Bucks would be like six and a half games ahead of the Raptors. Okay, so I think it's Lakers, Clippers for the first two. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be the Jazz, or no, the Nuggets as the third seed. Bucks um, and Raptors for the East. Okay, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then... Third, who's a, who's in contention for third? Nuggets are in third right now. Jazz are one and a half games back of the Nuggets. But I'm gonna have the Nuggets like going third. I think I'm gonna have the Thunder, who are a game back of the Jazz, passing Jazz in fourth. That's what I think. Okay, so we got the Thunder in the fourth. You don't think the Rockets are gonna no. pass the nope. Nuggets. Huh? Nope. I don't think the rack, Rockets are going to go I, off. I don't I, think so. I, I think the Jazz I mean, are going to... The small. Jazz are a game back of the Rockets, or a game ahead of the Rockets. I think the Jazz will probably end up in fifth. I don't think they'll fall too far. The Rockets in sixth. Rockets in sixth and Mavericks in seventh. They're, they're going to be all very similar records, though. As in, they're yeah. all already very close, and I don't know how much of that's going to And then who's going to be eighth seed? Memphis is currently three and a half games ahead of the... Uh, Grizzlies, or no, this is three and a half games of the Portland Trailblazers, the Pelicans, and the Kings. So three and a half games ahead of those three teams. Mm-hmm. And they're four games ahead of the Spurs and six games ahead of the Suns. So the Suns are probably not going to make it. They're six games back. Probably not. Probably the worst team here by far, or the, or the, or the Wizards. Either way, they're both bad. The Suns aren't going to make it. Spurs, I don't think they're going to make it. Either. I think it's going to be either the Grizzlies or the... The Grizzlies and the Blazers do play each other Friday night on NBA TV. The Blazers are two-point favorites. That game is a very important game. I'm going with the Grizz. I'm going with the Grizz, too. I think the Grizz are going to make it. Okay. The Blazers The Blazers have struggled recently, but they are healthy now. Maybe Dame goes off and carries them, and as, he can, as he's shown, he can do. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I think the Grizzlies are going to... The Grizzlies are a better team. They're a better unit. I think they'll probably end up... Yeah, I just think they have better chemistry. They're yeah. hungrier. Exactly. They're hungrier. The Blazers just it's kind of disappointed uh, after last year's conference finals berth. And they may not get into the playoffs. They still have a lifeline, though. And the Pelicans, I don't think they're going to make it either. No, no. I just think they did that just so they can all... They want Zion for ratings. But I think the Grizzlies are going to make it as they would seen. That's all we have. And the, in, the West, in the East... Bucks, Raptors, Celtics. Celtics. I think they're going to be third. I think the Heat are going to stand fourth. Um, I see the Sixers passing the Pacers in fifth, and the Pacers go sixth. I see that. I think. Um, I think that obviously the Nets are going to stay in seventh, and I think the Magic are going to stay in eighth. I think things are going to uh, stay. Yes. Maybe, actually, no, no. I think the Magic are going to pass the Nets because I think the Nets are going to struggle considering they don't have half their team. half their roster. But the Nets are still six games ahead of the Wizards. I still think that I don't think anybody. It. I think the East is pretty set. The Wizards need a miracle. They need the Nets to completely suck, suck and they need yeah. the Wizards to win. I just don't see that happening. I see yeah. the Nets still getting in as eight seed, despite the fact that they will struggle. I think the Magic are going to get in as a seventh. Are both KD and Kyrie healthy? They're no. not playing. KD is not playing. Kyrie's, Kyrie's not, not playing. Jordan's not. Um, I think a few other guys aren't playing either. Um, they signed, signed Tyler Johnson. They as have Karis LeVert. Karis LeVert is back, though. Yeah. And they do have Spencer. Well, so, is Spencer Dimity playing? I don't think so. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. So, we're, if we're looking they, at this... They play, they play um, uh, on Friday night against the Magic. That's a huge game for seeding. Uh, so, if you look at this, it's the West is going to be the uh, Lakers, Clippers, yeah. Nuggets, Thunder, Jazz, Rockets, Mavs, Grizzly, in that order. With the East being the Bucks, the Raptors... Spencer Dinwiddie is not playing. The Celtics, the Heat, the 76ers, Pacers, the Magic, then the Nets with the 8th seed. Yep. That's Spencer did we is not playing. So the Nets are missing a lot of their roster, but, but they're still so far ahead of the Wizards still. Yeah. So they what's uh? So what else do we have on the agenda? Uh, I just have like what we think conference finals and finals are going to be. Okay, so with the conference finals, Bucks versus Raptors. Bucks versus Celtics is what I'm saying. That's my. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so. I might, might be a little biased here, but I think the Celtics... If the be, Celtics are the third seed, that's they're going to have to go through the Bucs. No, they're going to have to go through the Raptors. Really? Yeah. So that works? Two seed and the three seed are on one side, one yeah. seed and the four seed on the other. Celtics will play the Raptors in the second round. Oh, okay. They'll be pretty good. They could, I think the Celtics will beat the... Um, uh, they'll, beat the, they'll beat the Raptors in the series. They just won't beat the Bucs. All right, all right. So... Bucks versus Rap. So we're going to do... Bucks for Celtics. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Celtics have everyone playing? Uh, yeah, pretty much. No one's not playing. Out of uh, the star, out of there. Kemba, Jason, Jalen, uh, Thias, 
and um, yeah, I'm looking up Gordon. Gordon. They're all playing. If they are, Gordon I do believe. Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. I know Gordon will make it. No, I'm runs. trying to see if it's because I'm not. Is it? Do you think Gordon? Is it conference formatted this year in the playoffs? What do you mean? Like, is it? They're doing it like they normally do with like the C eight seeds in the conference. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what I wanted to make sure of because like I don't know if they're doing a sixteen team playoff. I didn't think they were, but I want to say though. Um, what do you call it? Gordon Hayward. Is, do you think he has no confidence left? I think it's hard to have confidence after a horrific injury like that. And I think um, with the other signings that the Celtics have made and the development of guys like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown in his absence, I think he's kind of sque- been phased out of the team. As much as he is a good player and he is an effective starter on that team and he's a and he is obviously productive, he just... He, isn't as good as what the Celtics thought they were getting when they signed him from the Jazz when he had an all-star season. And he may never be that good again because he hasn't. He still isn't his full self from the injury. So it's so, like, so you're saying you don't think if he like went to a different team, he could? No. You just think these... Maybe. Maybe if he goes for a bad team and puts up... I think he stats. could be a third tier. Like, if he got traded to the he Mavericks... Is the fourth, he is the if fourth he got option sent, right now for the Celtics. I think if he got traded to the Mavericks, he would be a perfect third... Exactly. For the yeah, yeah. No, like, I agree. I agree. I think that's him his catching feeling. balls from Kristoff and Luca to that's create it. like a triangle type thing. He's good. He's a good player and he's a productive player. I'm not. He's saying a good he's three and D guy. Yeah, I'm not saying he's a bad player. I just his confidence is. He'll shot never be an all star. He'll never be an all star again like he used to be. Okay. That's that's yeah. Uh, so and I think, but I think the Celtics roster is good enough that they'll beat the Raptors. I just think Nick Nurse is a better coach than Brad Stevens. Ooh, that's a close one. I think they're both great coaches. They're both great coaches. Don't get me wrong. But we both love the Celtics. But uh, Nick I'm, Nurse, I'm, I'm Nick gonna... Nurse is leading the second best team in the East without Kawhi. That is true, but they still have a really good team. They have a bunch of good pieces, and, uh, which he, which none of them are really uh, that's lottery fair. picks. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, I I I, I don't want to say that Brad Stevens is the worst coach because I just can't bring myself to do that. But I I I, I think Nick they're Nurse either on the same tier or Nick Nurse they're is a little team. bit better. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. They're both top five coaches in the NBA. I Maybe even top three. I agree with that. Like, Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich might be the only two better than them. Yeah. I don't think... Doc could, Rivers. Doc Rivers is a little below them. Doc Rivers is a player's coach in a way. Like, how do you... Like, Doc Rivers isn't a bad coach, but Doc Rivers... I would never put him in the same stra- threshold no, as Greg Popovich. But Doc Rivers, or but Doc Rivers is, is a is a man manager. He gets yeah. the best out of his players. His players will do- his players will be willing to go to bat for him no matter what because yeah. he connects with his players so well. Being a former player, obviously, it yeah, makes exactly. Sense. Doc Rivers can, and that is another aspect of being a good coach is the fact that you give Doc Rivers a bunch of talent. He's going to get the best out of him because his players are willing to shut up and play for him. Exactly. Exactly. No. I completely agree. He's but just, X and O's wise, he's not as good as Brad Stevens yeah. or Nick Nurse or Greg Popovich yeah. or Steve Kerr. Or like, like Mike Budenholzer. Yeah, or Mike Budenholzer because he comes from the Greg Popovich lineage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Just my one thing with um, uh, Mike Budenholzer is he's, his offensive he's, stuff. He's always been carried by stars, his teams. Not with Atlanta. Atlanta was different. Atlanta was different. Exactly. That 2015 team where all five players yeah, made an all-star. Atlanta's not the same. Mike Budenholzer's a great coach. Mike Budenholzer is a great coach. He's a great coach. Frank Vogel is a good, good coach. coach. Not a great He has Calber to win an NBA championship, Frank yes. Vogel. He has been to the conference it's finals. If Tyron Lue won an NBA championship, Frank Vogel okay, yeah, won yeah, an yeah. NBA yeah. championship. Frank Vogel has been to the conference finals multiple times with the Pacers. He is a better coach. He's probably the best Ooh. coach that LeBron has had since Eric Spolstra, I would say. LeBron never had great coaches in I agree. Either of his tenures I think Frank Vogel might be a better coach than Eric Spolstra because Eric Spolstra essentially at the during the time He's LeBron still was a there. Good coach for Miami, he was, though. He was like a puppet good. of Pat Riley during when LeBron was there. Yeah, but now look at what he's done. Oh, Eric Spolstra is a better coach now. Yes, I'm just saying exactly. I think but when a... LeBron was on the Heat, oh yeah, but anyway, Frank is. Vogel was a better coach. Yeah, than. Eric Spolster, Eric Spolster at the time. Him. Eric Spolster just beat him because he had LeBron and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Yeah. And Frank Vogel didn't have Three guys, guys in their prime. Yeah. yeah. Frank Vogel had Paul George, who was ascending, but Paul George wasn't in his Look prime. Look what he did with Roy yeah. Hibbert, Danny Granger, Lance Stevenson. Roy Hibbert was Stevenson. an all-star, and then Frank Vogel leaves, and Roy Hibbert's washed out of the league. 
Lance well, that, well, Roy Hooper got also screwed over because the following season, after his great season, they changed the rule of verticality. verticality. Yeah, I guess that's and, fair. And but like Lance Roy Herbert, Herbert, Hibbert couldn't block shot blocks anymore because he started getting a lot more fouls because the verticality rule was like, I don't understand. It's like the way you jump up and you can't move. And if you oh. do, it's a foul. And Roy Hibbert... Well, because even if you jump straight up, you're still jumping in them. It's yeah. still called. It's so you called. have to stay at your feet landing. You and Roy Hibbert never was able to do you that. You can't slide under either. Roy Hibbert was insane. Yeah, and Lance Stevenson... What, uh, he league. also choked, though. He choked so hard, yeah. he was never good again. Lance, Lance Stevenson led the league in triple doubles when he was in Indiana his first tenure. Which really? is Which is insane to think about that they did that. They did that. So Clippers-Lakers in the Western? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Clippers, Lakers, and the Western. We can agree with that. Um, the West is good, but uh, the Clippers and the Lakers. The Clippers have the best bench in the league. I think the like Mavs the Lakers and Rockets have a better are start out lineup. early. The Lakers have the best two players in the, on the court. I don't. They play. I don't see the Nugget, Thunder, or Jazz doing anything. No, I'm. I think it's Clippers, Lakers. It's kind of. And I don't think the Lakers there. have gone full force this season. I don't think they've played a hundred. LeBron or AD has played a hundred percent. But the Clippers haven't either. And you got to think, you have Kawhi and Paul George. Uh, when they have. play each other, they go 100%. Yeah, playoff, but, and the Clippers have beat them. Playoff more, LeBron. Playoff Kawhi, too, though. And the more. Clippers have a significantly better well, bench I than saw, I saw this video but a listen, little though, while ago that Kawhi Leonard is not the same player since that injury. Let me explain. But he, Even though Kawhi... Like, but he was he because last year he carried the Raptors season. to the championship. He went insane. Well, he didn't do good against Golden State. He did insane against the 76ers. And the, in the playoff series before that. And yeah. he did good enough against Golden State and still put up numbers. They just have a good team because they're the Raptors. But Kawhi also is a good team with the Clippers. And listen why I like the Clippers. Here, I'll explain. Are you taking the Clippers over the... Let me explain why. The Clippers have the best bench in the league. And it's not even close. Oh, yeah, they have so much depth. Minutes. And in this restart, where teams are going to be rusty... Teams are going to have to use their rotation more because guys don't have as much stamina and endurance as they did because they haven't played basketball in a while. The Clippers' deep bench during a shortened season where players all have rest but are still out of shape, Mm -hmm. I think the Clippers, with their better bench, is really going to show in the playoffs especially, and they'll win. That's why I like the Clippers over the Lakers in that series because I think the Clippers' bench is going to separate them because in in a season where people are all rusty and aren't in the best shape, Okay, so I like him in that series. That's one that's guy just my said. Thought. Gordon needs a new. Okay, the Jackson Mock guy was talking and commented. Uh, yeah. Thunder could shake things up. To be honest, he said. I do see that Chris Paul could get some wins out there. Okay, yeah. Billy, he's saying Billy Donovan gets no credit, which I do agree. Billy Donovan's a better coach than. He- yeah, especially with this. I think this season has changed it. He underperformed with um, Paul George and Russell Westbrook, but. And you could say that he did. Paul George was a top three player in MVP voting that year, and they lost in the first round. That's underperforming. But he has done very well this year losing his best two players and making do of what he has on the roster. He's a lot of good players on that team. I don't see them doing anything, though, because if they win in the first round, they'd be playing the Lakers, and they're just not going to beat the Lakers. Yeah. They they have uh, what's Let me find their record against above five. I mean, this is obviously... Uh, before the restart, but before the restart, the Thunder were nine and seventeen against teams with winning records. They were thirty-one and seven against teams with losing records. They mm-hmm. beat the shit out of bad teams. They lose teams that are better than them. Yeah, no. Uh, so that's just who they are. If we're going back, I say Lakers versus Bucks. Lakers take it. And I say six. and I say Bucks Clippers, and I think the Clippers take it in seven. Really, Re- Chris. Wait, so NBA finals and conference. Bucks conference. versus Lakers, That's Lakers in six, Clippers versus Celtics. Clippers versus Bucks, and I think Clippers, uh, Clippers in seven. Clippers versus, versus Bucks in seven. That's what I think. I could say <laughs> I could see the Clippers versus Bucks in seven for sure. Uh, you don't see the Lakers? No. The Clippers bench is too good. It's a season where people are out of shape. They haven't I don't played know. basketball a while. The Clippers have the deepest bench in the league. I think and that goes Lakers, a long way. That goes so a really long way. Prone. I don't... It's LeBron. Rondo, okay, Rondo yes, I get it. But playoff season. Kawhi? Playoff Kawhi is a real the thing, The Lakers too. have beat the Clippers more time this year. But this is a new season. Yeah. And this is a new season with a shortened roster. And the Clippers... The, and the, Lakers, been, the Lakers lost one of their best the defensive players. LeBron's been juicing. LeBron's the, been juicing. The Lakers lost one of their best defensive LeBron's players. LeBron's been Avery juicing. Bradley, and replaced him with the defensive liability in J.R. Smith, who when he's not shooting well, isn't effective and isn't, is a net negative to the team. Avery Bradley, losing him is more important than people think. Especially with a team that doesn't have a great bench already, going up against the Clippers with the best bench in the league and the most adept. on LeBron the LeBron eight straight finals. Eight straight finals, but he didn't make the playoffs last year. 
Yeah, because well, have, they have the yeah. same exact team. You can't. You no, can't. No. Last season was a fluke. But but LeBron this is different. LeBron fucking James. But Are you telling I'm me telling you right go. now, <laughs> he was not going to the finals because the Clippers have a better roster, and this is a unique season, which uniquely suits the Clippers better than the Lakers. If they if the season never paused and the Lakers and the Clippers played in the conference finals, I would have picked the Lakers. But you the season paused. No. The season paused for three months. Everybody had time to get healthy, but they haven't played basketball in a while, so they're out of shape, and the Clippers' deep bench is what's going to win them the finals. That's what I think. That's just... Uh, so bench goes a long way. I got Lakers in six against the Bucks. They got Clippers in seven Clippers against seven. The, the Bucks. Bench. The bench, we can yeah. only agree on the fact that the Bucks, uh, Bucks are going to make it to the they're just better playoffs. Than, they're better than everyone in the Bowl, East. And make it to the finals, and they're going to fucking lose to whoever makes it from the West. We can agree that the West is going to win. Yes. Yes. 100%. But it is more competitive, and I can see a lot of different things happening because it's a unique season. And we, the Lakers might not even make it. The Clippers might not even make it. I don't think that's going to happen. I think one of them is. But we just, you don't know. It's a unique season. This is the potential to be one of the most interesting NBA playoffs just because nobody's in great playing shape. And playing eight games in regular season doesn't exactly prepare you for the grind of the playoffs. And you it really, never does. Do you really think Giannis can carry a team like Kawhi Leonard did through the Giannis East lost to Boston. the Raptors. Giannis and the Bucks yeah. lost to the Raptors. Yeah. Giannis couldn't carry a team in the finals last year. I, I don't know. He how. can carry a team to the finals this year because they don't have Kawhi in the East anymore, but he's not gonna win it. He's not versatile enough yet. He doesn't have. Team. I just don't think he has enough uh, depth. Uh, like he has the. If he you're saying the Lakers around. have a depth problem, the Bucks as well have a depth yes, problem. 100%. And especially compared with the Clippers. Yeah, I agree. If the Clippers and Bucks play each other, the Clippers have so much depth. But that's I'm why, saying, that's why I'm saying it, it's a, it goes both ways. With the if we're going, Paul George versus Kawhi, LeBron versus AD. LeBron and AD is has is a better duo than it's Paul a duo. George. It's and a Kawhi. duo. Yeah. But this is a, this is a unique season where having multiple players well, on the bench is important. Center position, the center position is where it's going to come back. I'd rather take Dwight Howard and Javale McGee over Zubac and Montrez Harrell what? any day of the fucking Montrez week. Montrez Harrell is the, clearly the best player of the four. Yeah, his eight, his eight rebounds a game. His eight rebounds a fucking game. Yeah, but just eighteen and a half points a game. That's cool, bro. Any of cool, them. cool. Let me see the defense. Let me see he, the rebounds. Jesus fuck, he's a way more efficient player. Javale McGee guys. and Dwight Howard combined give you like three okay. blocks a game listen, at least. Listen, I get it. Zubac and fucking Harold defensive presence is not even a fraction no. of what Javale and me, McGee, Javale McGee Jesus and Dwight fuck Howard's dude. fucking defensive presence is. You can't tell is. me that Montrez Harold is. Montrez Harold won't be able to score against Dwight Howard or yes, Javale he, McGee. Oh my god, yeah, he will. No, we won't. Yeah, Dwight he will. Howard. Dwight Howard. Dude, you're telling Dwight me that Howard is old, 25 minutes a old, game old with his Dwight one Howard and half steals and his almost block and a half a game. You cannot tell me that Dwight Howard... Dwight Howard's almost averaging a double-double in, in less minutes than Montrez Harrell. He's averaging similar stats at better efficiency with a better net better rating. Efficiency. With a better net rating. With a better net rating. With a better net rating. Don't use net rating. Don't use net rating. (laughs) Okay, do his PR. Check the PR. It's like 18, and the Montrezl Harrell's like 24. Okay, but the thing is, is Montrezl Harrell just has more scoring. Dwight Howard doesn't have to score. Dwight Howard isn't in a position that he needs to score. His job is... Oh, he's not. He's not He's a rebounder. He averages the same number of rebounds, and he plays like six less minutes. And the same number of blocks. Sure, but yeah, that's huge. Imagine okay, if they played the same he, amount he, of minutes. But he scores, but he scores, second, like, he yeah. scores way less points. I see, I'm kind of on the I'm leaving towards Sierra. He scores way less points. Do you get what points. I'm saying? He scores they start to fail. Yeah, he scores less points, but that's not his job anymore. He's just on defense. Okay, but Montreal's gonna, job is scoring points. The thing is, going to come down. Who's going to control the boards? Who is going to control the boards? And it's going to be the Lakers. Because you got Anthony Davis. It comes down to depth. It comes down to depth. Yes, yeah, you can come down to depth. Who but scores, who has the better rebounding who scores, team? Who you scores have, when they have to when they You have can to have good depth. But if you're not getting possessions or if you're not getting second no, chance can points, I, you're not going to be able to score. If Deion Waiters is getting six shots in one possession. Okay, let me, let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish what I'm saying in a nutshell here. Okay, sure. The Lakers have a better starting lineup. I will give you that. But where LeBron has been fucked over in the past is the few minutes that LeBron goes out of the game, mm-hmm. they go on runs. And I know Anthony Davis in the game, they're not going to take them both out. Probably not for at least, as much as they can avoid. But when LeBron or AD goes out of the game, the Clippers have so many more options that they can throw at the Lakers. And in a well-rested season where people aren't going to be in as good playing shape, the Clippers roster is uniquely benefited by it. 
with all that depth on the bench and all that scoring that they can still get when they take out Kawhi or Paul George, it's going to help them in the Lakers in the long run, in the playoffs, in the seven-game series, or six-game series when it goes long like that. With all those games coming up quickly and them not being in good playing shape, that's why the Clippers bench is going to take them in that series. Like, the rebounding, sure, I'll give the Lakers have an advantage of that, but the depth is what's going to give the Clippers the win. They play more efficient basketball on the, with their bench, and... We, we will see. Can we, we just show the viewers Sierra's notes right now? Just like, <laughs> just like, I have, yeah. Sunset, He's taking a lot of notes. Look at that. I don't even know what those are, but he's doing it, man. He's, he's doing it. Okay, all right. This makes me look like I have Tourette's while I was writing. So, I just had like a twitch. Yeah. Like I had a tick come in halfway. I was like, Ugh. With the NBA season, with the NBA finals being done, we are now on to the NBA draft prospects. Okay. Your stock. Ciro, you, you, you start with us on so this. So we're going to start with the Israeli League MVP, Denny Avita. Denny Avita was... Already a top 15 lottery pick in this year's He's draft. He's a top 10 pick now. He's going to go in the top He's 10. a top 5 pick now. Okay? Top what did we have him going? What did we five. have him going in our mock draft? Always top 10. No, we, we had him in the top 10. We didn't have him in the top 10. I think we though. had him once going on 8, and the other time we had him going 7. We had him going near the We 10. had him going 8. We had him going 8. But I think he's now going to be the 4th pick. If the Atlanta Hawks have the 4th pick in the NBA draft, we Man. had them going Obi in our latest right. mock draft. So I have them going, keeping Clip Capella, not going uh, That's fair. Tony, and they're going to go Denny Avita to put him at the small forward position exactly. or the power, actually small forward position next to John Collins and, and Clint Capella. Capella. Then they have Kevin Herter, and, and then Trae they have Trey Young. And, and he's a point offense. forward. That's a great fucking offense. And I, he's just good. Because Trey Young, yes, he can pass, but he's not the world's best. And he's uh, also facilitator. A, and he's a he's a he is a huge defensive liability. Billy. So that very... is the one thing that you can come at me with Denny Avita is look, if you're gonna get Denny Avita, you guys are gonna suck at defense. But so, they were gonna suck at defense no matter who they drafted. One player doesn't change their defensive woes. Uh, they have to address their defensive woes by signing veteran free agents on minimums that are good defenders for role players so they can mix and match their lineups. That's what the Hawks are probably going to do. You cannot miss the chance to take someone like Denny, Denny Avita in the, in the, with the fourth pick, who's instantly going to seamlessly fit into your offense. They need to take that. They need to. They need building blocks around the future. Yeah, no, and John gonna, Collins and Trey Young, great offense. I'm trying to think of another team that Denny could go to that has a pick. Top pick. Uh, another guy who has risen he, is... He goes to the Pistons at five if they don't. If the Hawks don't take him. I could see more the I'm convinced the top three picks picks are going to be, depending on who gets it, it's going to be Wiseman, Ball, Edwards. Top three picks. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Th- those are going to be the top three picks in the draft, regardless of who. It's just the order they go is who. It's just team fits. It's, need. it's needs. One team, if they need a point guard, they're going to go Ball. If a team needs a shooting guard or small forward, they're going to go Edwards. If they need a big man, they're going to go Wiseman. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, yeah. That's how it's going to go. I think Lamelo is kind of the New York next. Well, I see Lamelo going to a team that needs uh, either a franchise piece or needs uh, ticket sales. It just, or de- it just depends revenue. on, like, if the Pistons get the second pick or the first pick, the Pistons are going to pick Melo. But yeah, because they need to fill the... They don't fucking get anybody watching their Depending games. Nobody, on who the fuck watches a Pistons game? No one. No one. Not need even a sell stand. Probably they more people stand. outside Detroit watch Pistons games than people who fucking Oklahoma live in Detroit. Oklahoma fans probably watch the Pistons because of Blake Griffin. Oh yeah. I mean, like, like they. I didn't need, think about that. Need, yeah. Is, need, is he from Oklahoma? Yeah. Yeah. They need to sell tickets. They need to sell tickets in that stadium. And Lamelo Ball is instant publicity, instant. That's what I'm saying. Lamelo Ball, Ball yeah. might be over, not overdrafted. What part of Lamelo Ball? Lamelo Ball draft will, stock is because of his ticket sales. Lamelo Ball will impact the team more than any other player in the draft. Financially, yeah. purely because of ticket sales and jersey, jersey sales. sales and literally TV, and TV revenue, TV streams, revenue. streams, people it's are going like to be Zion. Paying. It's like Zion, Zion with yeah. the Pelicans. If Zion went to New York, New York would be getting all those national TV games, but he didn't. He went to New Orleans, and now New Orleans is getting all these national TV games since he came back because holy shit, we want to see Zion. It, the Pelicans were one of the poorest teams in the league. They were one of the least valuable teams in the league. Their value is going to go up exponentially because of Zion. Every year for a long because time. of Zion. So, it's like LeBron with the Cavs, man. Another guy who I've seen go up on boards is Yan Madar, his teammates with Denny Avita. Uh, I've seen it on the second rounds. He's a little bit older. He's like a 6'1 point guard. Nothing See, I special. I don't know anything about him. <laughs> but 
he's not the guy I want to talk about. I just wanted to mention Yamadar because I know people are big on Yamadar. He, he's a good – he's like TJ McConnell. Oh, yeah. So he's like a solid, solid piece. Six Nothing man, special around him. He just gets the job done. He plays minutes. He does well. He's yeah. Crafty. Crafty. He's a good defender. Gritty. Like, that type of player. TJ McConnell. Not, not a liability in defense. Yeah. He'll hold his own. He's, yeah. He'll hold his own. Yeah. So the guy I do want to talk about is Kellyan Hayes. This uh, is a, yeah. I wrote an article saying one time, not an article, a post on Reddit, and I got destroyed. I deleted the post because of the title I was getting wrecked. Is because I said he was the next Kobe. And not in the sense that he was going to be the next Kobe Bryant, but in the sense that he was raised the same way Kobe Bryant was. His, he was born in Florida, and his father played overseas his whole life. So Kelly and Hayes grew up around basketball, overseas, international, like basketball. Like in France, where France, he was born. Or not Germany, born, and everything. He learned how to... So, Kelly Hayes, growing up, has honed his intangibles and fundamentals on the things that he can fix. Not the things that he has to rely on athleticism. He's worked on his dribbling, his ball handling. He's worked on his basketball IQ. He's worked on his shooting. He has a good shot. For He's like Steph Curry. Yeah. Kobe and Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Sons of basketball, pro basketball players who needlessly worked on fundamentals and tirelessly got better at them. Yeah, even though they're not the most athletic. They're not the be- the tallest. Well, Kobe was a genetic freak. Yeah, but Steph, Steph. Steph is not the most athletic player. So He's a, yeah. I've been th- saying between the two guard pros- French guard prospects, Theo Maladon, who's 6'5", who could guard one to the three, yeah. Who I think personally has a higher ceiling due to the fact that of his athletic ability, he could be a better, has a higher potential than Kelly and Hayes. But he has a lower floor, while Kelly and Hayes has a higher floor where I see he could be a DJ Augustine type like player. Like a floor, like a starting point guard. Yeah, floor general guard. who just gets you like 10 points a game, 7 But he's a better assists. scorer than DJ, so it's like we think he has a high I think ceiling. he's a poor man to Tony Parker is his ceiling. Not... Not he's to, taller though. He's taller than Tony. I guess he's six three. Tony was six one, six two. Yeah, they're about the same height. Killian Hayes is like six four, but they're the same. Thing. Tony's like six one. Crafty guys. They're not the most athletic. They weren't insane. They're never going to be twenty point scorers, but they can get. Killian you. Hayes is six five two fifteen. He's, he's just six a bi- five. He's a bigger Tony Parker. Uh, a better, a bigger Tony Parker. I see him as. Or what we wanted, Dante Tony Exum. Parker, yeah, Tony Parker six. His floor is either. What Actually, we, his floor is Dante Exum. His what, floor is Dante Exum. A better Dante, Dante Exum. A better Dante Exum. What we thought Dante Exum would be. Is his floor. Or it's maybe... Well, ceiling, ceiling. Because Dante Exum we thought was going to be a transcendent talent and be yeah. an all-star. A lot of people picked, thought he well, treated him very awesome. highly. Uh, couldn't say healthy. Couldn't say healthy injury issues. Yeah, Dante Exum without the athleticism. Because Dante Ex- more Exum skilled. was insane. More skill. More skill. More skill. Less than Dante. Dante less a, l- yeah, a more skilled Dante Exum, less athleticism. Yeah, there's a lot of comparisons for him. It's just that, like, he's the type of player that he isn't bad at anything, but he isn't elite or great at anything. He's a little bit above average at everything. And it's like, he is good enough, and he is productive, and he will fit in as a building block for a team that needs to build around a player. Oh, exactly. No, exactly. It's not and like... It's like if he goes in the top five, or maybe goes six or seven. I think eight. he goes to the Suns. I want we him had to him go six. to the Suns. He needs to go to the fucking Suns That's, to stay behind Ricky Rubio for a year, so Ricky Rubio teaches him the ropes. And yeah, and then they Because Ricky Rubio is the perfect guy, because he came from Euroball, too. And Ricky, Ricky Rubio was a young star. He was thrown into the professionals when he was, like, 16. So it's like, Ricky Rubio has been playing for a while, and obviously he... Didn't turn out as well as they thought, but he's still been a well. Injuries did that years. too. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Over and and like, the it, fact that he couldn't shoot, but also but the league changed as soon as he came in too. Yeah, and but well, he, he is, shoots now. He shoots really well you know, now. But like when he couldn't shoot early in his career, he was just a quick, crafty point guard, and injuries limited his quickness. Matt, I would love him next to fucking Towns now. Yeah, I would. But like Ricky Rubio is doing good. He's a good player. When he retires, I'm getting a Timberwolves Rubio jersey. That that'll be tough. That'll be hard. You're get a Timberwolves Rubio jersey. That's hard. Ricky Rubio. Ricky Rubio Timberwolves guy. jersey would guy. be hard as fuck. What a dude. guy. He's had a good career. He's had a. Oh yeah, he's had a fucking great career. Yeah. He's made a shit ton of money. Oh yeah. Fucking bastard. He's not a bastard. But he's a good guy. Yeah. He made a shit ton of money. I don't know. Uh, any more? Any more <laughs> no, I'm, the, I'm the bastard for calling him a fucking. <laughs> any bastard. more prospects, or do we want to move on? Um, I'm trying to think of any prospects that I've seen. Ooh, this is really not a prospect in this year's draft, but we uh we we were on Reddit and I showed it Luke earlier. This what is Brad Wanabinia, the 16 year old kid who uh, from Victor France, Wanabiyama or whatever. Is he in France? Yeah, he's from France. He Seven plays, three. He plays eight for, foot wingspan. Uh, shoots like Christoph Porzingis. Block shots like Rudy Gobert. 
He I'm is not a, little, a little tall ass white kid. No, no, not kind of. He's, Kaya, not he's Kaya listed as 7'2", 240 pounds, which is ridiculous for Jeez. a kid who's sixteen. There's no way a sixteen year old should have a filled out a filled out body like that. Yeah. But he's very tall, has a very long wingspan, and people are saying that he is the greatest European prospect potentially ever, maybe since like Luca. Um, so like he is obviously a unique talent. Um he played senior minutes. He played a few Euro Cup games. He only played like a few minutes, though. But he was the youngest ever player in Euro Cup history for his team. Really? He was like 15 years and nine months old when he made his professional senior debut, which is insane. That is so young. And he plays for the reserve team. I just think 240 at six fu- 16. And, yeah, and He's only 60 pounds from he being was, the same weight was, as Rudy he, Gobert. He, he was 190 a year ago. I, I looked up an article, and it said he was 190. And I looked it up on Wikipedia. It says he's 240. That's insane. That's insane how much weight he's put on in this band. He is already filled out. He just is a genetic freak. And, like, you cannot teach genetic freaks. Like, they... Yeah. That you can't... You have someone who's 7'3", 240, or 7'2", whatever he is. Like, it's just... You have to... You have to, he, he just has to hone his skills. And, like, his passing... They're saying he's a Kristaps Porzingis, but a better passer. Better passer better, than Kristaps. I saw that. Yeah. That's insane. Like, I like that highlight video you showed me where he's, like, like posting up and then kicking out of the double team, the open shooter. It's like... 16 year olds don't have that. Yeah, exactly. They don't have that. So the next thing we're going to talk about is what Um, we're It's the MLB outbreak is what we're at right now. Boo. Um, The MLB (laughs) outbreak, do we want to talk about it? So the MLB outbreak, Miami Marlins will not be playing. They had 17 members of their staff test positive. Um, The Orioles and the Yankees. The Yankees were supposed to play the Phillies who came in contact with the Marlins. Uh, what, what does coming contact mean? They played them. They played them the day before all this shit went down. Um, so the Yankees are instead playing the Orioles, and the Phillies and Marlins are just not playing right now. Oh, and they just switched them? They just there was a report that said they have not found any um, anybody besides the Marlins personnel that tested positive for it, as of now. I, I saw that earlier today. So it's like, maybe just the Marlins don't play. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how big this thing gets. The MLB... Not having a bubble is a huge issue. I mean, it's obviously hard to get baseball into a bubble. The games are very long. Having them share a stadium, it's like... It's a I don't tough. know. I feel like there's so many fucking complexes. If they, they had a complex, they could do it. They could 100% do it. They just have I feel they, like they there's somewhere think. in think. America that there is, like, three or four fields really near each other. Having 60 games is a lot, obviously, to have, like, a complex. But, like, I think they could do it. I don't know. I feel like they can get three or four fields right next to each other. And no, just yeah, like, in. there's no reason why this couldn't have been a reasonable thing with Emily and the money they have. But no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they're stupid, and they decided they wanted to be able to travel, and now look what happened. I See, lost my phone. I just got really pissed about that. I don't know where my phone is. The was. NBA did it right having a bubble, and there was no positive test of everyone who was there. So if we're talking about bubbles, we're done talking about the MLB, because I fucking... Hate the MLB. Well, yeah, no, I, we just wanted to address the. Comment. We just wanted to address that. Compare case. how shitty it is to the, M- to the NBA. We'll move on it. to a better topic. The Lacrosse. NFL. No, the, the NFL, NFL bubble. Players the NFL opting bubble. out. Yeah, so this is what I was gonna go. Lacrosse is after this. But yeah, lacrosse is after the this. The NFL. Training camp is after this, but. So essentially, if you opt out of the NFL, your contract gets told to the following year, and you get a hundred fifty thousand dollars check from the NFL, PA. and part of your salary from that contract that you voided. So, like, let's say I think it's like if you have a three point five million dollar contract, you get three hundred fifty thousand dollars plus one hundred fifty thousand dollars. You just get half a million dollars for sitting on your ass doing nothing. And if nothing. you are if you are on a veteran minimum, if you're on a rookie minimum, like or veteran minimum, thousand dollar contract or like a one million anything under a million special teamer. If you're a special teamer. Why would you not take this? You would take this, you sit out of season, the team You're fills the roster You're guaranteed a roster spot. spot for next year. Yeah, because it's not part of your contract. You just get part of your salary. You're forfeiting some of your salary. Why? why that's why you've seen six guys from New England do it. You've seen Ori a bunch of... Dante seen, Hightower, the one of the Patriots' best linebackers, three-time Super Bowl champion, opted out. Yeah, they're starting strong safety. He's Patrick probably going to get like $700,000. $800, More 000. than that. He makes like double-digit millions. Really? He's, he's forfeiting. He's not playing, though, but he makes... He he's one of their highest paid defensive players. Good, he probably should get still opted out. Still opted out. Didn't want to risk it. I mean, still, dude, like, I, it probably costs like they probably have a bunch of shit they're paying for monthly. But like an average human, you could live easily with like fifty thousand. And also, a year. he has a bunch of money saved up, considering he's made tens of millions of dollars in his career already. He he. He, what's the point of him playing a season if he doesn't feel comfortable taking the risks? Yeah, exactly. His family. Why, why, why would he? He's a 
Just play with these kids, play some 2K. Like, That's what Avery Bradley did when he took out of the NBA season. What is it? What? He said his kid, his kid has a respiratory illness and he did not want to play basketball this year because he wanted to stay at home with his kid who has a respiratory illness so he, just, so he doesn't get COVID. So Avery Bradley opted out of the season. I'm Jason Tatum, kid, Jason Tatum almost opted out of the season too. Why? Because um, his two year old kid lives at home and he wanted to be with his kid, but he decided to play. But he just like there's a video of him FaceTiming his kid and reading to his kid. But, like he, dude, that guy is like my age and has a fucking kid. That's like me being like, all right, dude, boys, gonna wrap up CBS. this podcast. I gotta go I take the kid. I gotta change my and, kid's like, diaper. One of our buddies when but it's like it's weird because he's an NBA player. He's an NBA cool. player though. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it's just weird because it's an NBA player, and it's like he's just like us. Too. Like when we went to when we, when I went to Boston for spring break, like he had just been in the CVS like hours before with his kid, like before we got there. And I was like wearing like Celtics jersey. This nice old lady was like, "That one Celtics player, what's his name? Jason Tatum. He <laughs> came in and bought something for his kid." When his I kid was honestly here. think this NFL season is the beginning of the end. The NFL the had so NFL. much time. They had so much time they to prepare are for this. Screwed. They had so much time. They're to gonna do for it this. either way. It's the NFL. They're gonna go on. They with had football. so much time to prepare for this, and they yeah. still fucked it up. They didn't come up with a good plan, and now they're just reacting late. Because they don't know what they're doing as far as having a bubble and all that shit. They I know. love... What was that tweet they did? We we want to play? I don't know. You guys saw that on Twitter last week of all the NFL players going like, we want to play. We want to play. Well, I think they're just shitting on Roger Goodell for not... But they have been for years thing, because yeah. as they rightfully should, he sucks. He's yeah. a terrible commissioner. And the NFL is still the number one sports league right now. But there's been so much shit going on since that whole national anthem protest to... Now that being an issue again, and then now the NFL not having time with COVID and treating its players like shit. Is that literally? Yeah, the NFL players hate the NFL. Like the the, the CBA expires in twenty twenty one. There's gonna be a lockout. Wait, it was a year deal only. A year yeah, CBA. Yeah, it was a ten year deal. From oh, the, the, no, they just redid the CBA this year, guys. No, they just passed it this oh, year. Oh yeah, they did pass it this year. Oh, but like a lot continuing of continuing it after this year then. Yeah, they just uh, passed the new that. CBA. You don't get, te- you can't get uh, suspended for weed anymore. You only get fined. Oh yeah, yeah, they passed it. Yeah, that's right because they passed it. But a lot of the players were like, "This is ridiculous." Like some of them did not like what. Well, happened. people, yeah, no, all the big guys didn't want it, but all, um, at the end of the but, day, okay, yeah, it's most until, of the league is what, made up by the smaller dogs, and the smaller dogs it, yeah, are going to yeah, take yeah. them more no, money. No, 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 yeah, it's until twenty thirty, and they expanded the roster spots. I mean, they could have solved it easily. I'm trying to see what I'm, I'm trying to letting see. Letting players get personal endorsements. Yeah, they can't yes. get personal endorsements. I'm trying, I'm, I'm, that was the big part of the 2011 lockout. Where did they get personal endorsements on this one? Yeah, they did. But that's like they didn't get to the point that they they like also are now getting like they're getting NFL like set up hospitals and like getting health care to their to their uh, retirees. Yeah, that's been should, a huge one. As they should, which is a huge thing. But but with that being said, with that being said, the NFL and the players they've never had a good relationship and. The players and the owners have never had a good relationship, and they will continue to not have a good relationship. But a part of that agreement in 2011 was owners would have no judicial overview when it came to owner and player disputes. What do you mean? So, just say a player gets fined, Uh um, the players players organization couldn't come in and it's hard to explain. I so like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. so much more legit than the last time we made a podcast, the three of us yeah. in the Paulo's room. Oh, yeah. These little mic stands makes it seem like a little bit more legit. Of All right. So, um, with, the NFL, with the NFL business done, we can talk about either the Champions League or lacrosse, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, let's give a lacrosse rundown. This yeah, one is I'm like a, the bathroom. That's fun. Uh, it'll be like a two minute segment. Yeah, yeah. So, right. Premier Lacrosse League just started July 27th. With the what was the Whip Snakes playing the Redwoods and the Whip Snakes winning that game, followed by Chrome playing. I want to say the Water Dogs. I don't even know if they played the Water Dogs, but Chrome ended up winning that game. And the Water Dogs, if you guys not, not did not know, is the new expansion team in the Premier Lacrosse League, who are playing their second season, which they're doing a championship series tournament, which is essentially like. A tournament from July the 27th to August 4th. And it's the six best teams out of the seven teams that are in the league. Go in and then they have a playoff that goes, I think, for another week. So it's pretty much like a two-week tournament they're doing just for this year, just so they can have something. And the Premier Lacrosse League, if you did not know, is by Paul Rabel and his brother Mark Rabel and a group of investors. 
and they're literally trying to create a lacrosse league where players are able to create their own brand. And that brand is is the NFL and NBA don't allow players to use their own highlights. The PLL yeah. has their own full-time studio that is an open source contact uh, player centered content creations like area. Yeah. So it's literally letting player they're creating highlight because everybody when you look at sports you want highlight clips and they know this is the best way for athletes to make money is through highlight clips. So the Premier League L- Premier Lacrosse League yeah. is doing player equity, giving players health care yeah, and to, uh, uh, salaries. Yeah. So that they are able to have like like the major league lacrosse league is it like really good like Paul Rabel is the most well known and almost like the way Gretzky of the sport and he's only worth three hundred thousand dollars and yeah. Casey Powell who's the older head who is like the Paul like the Wayne Gretzky before him I guess you could say the goat before him is worth one to five million dollars only because he got into business deals after lacrosse okay yeah though so it's like. He didn't make his money through lacrosse. He made some of it, but he was lacrosse was just more like a platform. For yeah, other stuff. and this league is taking uh, is like the XFL. They took all the sport betting things, so you see like the lines while you're watching. Yeah, they have like, that in- is cool. It, it, it's very important for new big sporting events and sporting leagues to incorporate betting into it because they know like the XFL like that was it's big for them. Sadly, it, they have live right in-game now, but... player like the players are mic'd up, but the commentators interview the players. So they have one where this guy Matt Gonnan was literally trash talking the goalie right next to the goalie. He goes, yeah, uh, ride arm just sucks. And he's like literally standing right next to the That's ride cool. arm. Did you hear though that, um, this is kind of a sidetrack, but still content related. Um, the NHL is actually, actually, they're having a five second live stream delay to censor players from like cursing and stuff. But that's fucking retarded. Yeah, like, that's like the whole thing. That's fucking stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, no, like, come on. Like. No, but, no I, I get it. I, I get it because the XFL had that problem where people were just dropping F bombs on the sideline. <laughs> yeah, but that's what makes the sport, sport fun. It's yeah. just they do want to. Nobody do need... wants those FCC violations, yeah, though. I'm sure they don't. <laughs> they, need, they need that broadcast money, man. Yeah. So, yeah, if you guys like lacrosse or you're looking for something new to watch your bet on, Put it on. It's on every single night right now. I think it's on NBC, 7.30 and 9.30 on NBC, NBC Sports. and NBC Sports. So check it out. NBC needs a new platform after the Premier League season ended. They've exactly. got it. They'll be showing lacrosse all the time. I would love to start repping lacrosse games like on this channel. So go check that shit out. I'll keep making videos of that. Oh, also, shout out to a local lacrosse company in Baltimore, Maryland that's making it big right now. Lack so hard. Created by the Vic family. <laughs> Shout out Mason Vic, Porter Vic. Porter Vic. Uh, 410 represent. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Baltimore people. Uh, so then the, what are we going on now? Uh, I had the UEFA Champions League, just a little quick. Uh, this is this is all Luke's This is Luke's little segment right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luke so, like, loves Premier League. He yeah. just likes soccer, so you go on. So like, for the Champions League, all the leagues have finished. All their seasons. Are, Italy is going to finish in the coming week. Um... They are all focused on the Champions League now. It's an end of season. Normally, the Champions League, they have two legs apiece where they play one game one week and they play the second leg another week. They're mm-hmm. not doing that anymore. They're all in a bubble in Lisbon. They're going to be playing one leg. So know, one they're, leg they're, they're, each. they're all in Lisbon because that's where it is. So it's a really, really good format. They just have one leg. So it's one game, winner takes all. And what we've got so far, we still have the second legs, though. They still have to play the second legs of the other four ties that were suspended mm-hmm. pre-COVID. So, like... I'm just going to do, like, a quick little rundown of who I think is going to win it and what's going to go on. So, like, Manchester City are playing Real Madrid in, like, the first knockout round. They mm-hmm. won the first leg 2-1 to one on the road, so now they're playing, like, basically the home leg. Yeah. So, they, them already winning, Manchester City, they're pretty odds-on favorites to win. They're going to want to win something after not winning the Premier League So and losing in the FA Cup. This is all they have to play for. They're going to win that easily. Lyon lost the first leg against Juventus, but due to the French League being suspended... Lyon hasn't played meaningful minutes in months. So who do you have winning the Champions League? Uh, like, who do I have winning the whole thing? Yeah. I'm just looking, I'm going through the bracket right now, because, like, that's how I pick. Because, like, uh, they have I a set bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Napoli and Barcelona, they're tied 1-1. Barcelona's mm-hmm. probably going to win that. And then, like, Chelsea's going to lose to Bayern Munich. They already lost 3-0 at home. They have no chance. So, like, I'll just do, like, a quick, just to get this thing over with. Um, the bracket, like, Atletico Madrid are going to beat Leipzig. 
Both the the German league finished a few weeks before any of the league. Leipzig's more rusty. The rust is going to be huge for the Champions League because they just haven't played in a while. Mm-hmm. And like PSG are going to get upset, I think, by Atlanta because they just lost Kylian Mbappe. I'm sure you guys you know who's yeah yeah. Oh, dude, Mbappe. did he get injured on that yellow card? He, he got injured in the cup final. That was a fun um, and was. they played like shit, and they barely beat a ten man yeah. team who's Santa Etienne. They're a mid table French side, and they barely beat them. They had ten men. They had 10 men, and they only won. PSG played against a team with 10 men, and they were still outplayed for most of the game. They only 10 versus zero. 11? Yeah, PSG lost their best player to injury. <laughs> He's not playing. They were, light, they were missing like three of their starters. What about Neymar? He's still playing, but Mbappe's their best player. Is Neymar just trash now? No, he's still great. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal. Yeah. He's just not Mbappe. No one's Mbappe. Yeah, no Why is Mbappe so good out of nowhere? He's, he's the fastest is. player in the league. He, hands out. Ever since yeah. he came into the league at 17, ever since he started playing at seven, with 17 years old, like his first season, he just keeps being good. He's mm-hmm. won like a league title every like full season of his career that he's played. Like this, this kid is this kid's He won a World Cup already. He's 21. Yeah. And he's already won a World Cup, and he's already won the Player of the Season, and he's already won so many league titles. Uh, the World Cup wasn't him. Multiple goals no, it, in the World Cup, he too. still scored in the World Cup final. Yeah, no. At what? It was he nineteen or twenty? He's yeah, but 19. he's not playing, so they're not going to win that game. They're going to lose. I think they're going to get upset by Atlanta, who have played more competitive football recently and aren't missing. He probably banged so many chicks. Oh yeah, Mbappe. Oh <laughs> my god, like, he's like, late, he looks yeah. like the, his teammates call him Donatello because he looks like a fucking Ninja Turtle. So his <laughs> teammates just call him that. They've been calling him that ever since he like has been playing. Uh, and then fucking. Man City are going to beat Juventus. Sorry, Ronaldo. Man City all the way. Sorry, Fuck Ronaldo. Juventus. I hate Man City, but they're going to beat them. They're going to beat them. And then if Bayern Munich gonna... are going to beat Barcelona. Barcelona are in shambles right now. Is Messi leaving? Potentially, depending on the board elections, because they hate the Barcelona like the, the Barcelona president of the club. They yeah. hate him. Messi hates him. Messi More. doesn't want anything to do with him because he's continued to shit on the club. Like they, Barcelona's fired a lot of the coaches, and they have chased out players and coaches that Messi likes. Mm-hmm. Um, they just sold... This player named Arthur to Juventus out of yeah. nowhere for an older guy, Pjanic. Are you serious? Um, and the locker for room. Pjanic? Uh, yeah, they they got like forty six million dollars in Pjanic, but it's still not like it's because so Barcelona trash. is complaining about losing money, but like they're still one of the most valuable clubs in the world, so like they should, they still have money. To burn. Yeah. But selling a locker room favorite um, and causing like revolts from all the players who are all pissed at him for selling them, like Barcelona is in shambles. Their coach might not even last. Messi doesn't want to play for him anymore. Reports came out that like. They want Xavi, like the former Barcelona player, to like come in as coach for like his Chavi. first coaching job. Yeah, X A V I Xavi, Xavi Alonso. No, 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 no. He, not Xavi Alonso. Xavi, like Xavi, the player. I thought it was the same guy, Xavi no, Alonso. No, 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 they, no, 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 no. They had two Xavi. No, 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 no. Xavi Alonso played for Real Madrid. But, he also played for um, Barcelona. I thought. No, no, no. He played for Liverpool before playing for Real Madrid. Oh, okay, so Xavi. I know what you're talking about. He used he to play with Messi though. Yeah, and he used David to play with Messi. Dilla. Yeah, you also used to play with Messi, but like. Yeah. Messi wants him, and there are rumors. I it, it, it's always every year that Messi's going to leave to go to like Man City, but this might actually happen. Maybe not this year because of financial problems and issues, but maybe in the next year or two when Messi's contract runs out because Pep Guardiola. Why does he want to get Premier League? Better league? Not no. He just wants to get out of Barcelona potentially. Spanish, Spanish league Barcelona. lower or higher than? Premier league? Um, not as good money, not as much prize money. Uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid are better than most Premier League teams, but the rest of the Spanish league, the bottom of the Spanish league. Could you garbage. imagine De Bruyne, Sterling, and Messi all in the same with team Pep Guardiola on the front? Dude, Pep Guardiola is, has a lot of influence with Messi. Obviously, he does. Yeah. You know. Did he just get traded from Barcelona? No, that was a few years ago. He's been at Man City for a few years, and he was at Bayern Munich before that. But he has a lot of influence with Messi, so he might take him. But, like, anyway, who I think is going to win it, if I had to pick, I would probably say Manchester City. I think because they have the best team in the world, and they have nothing to play for but this. Yeah. And they have the best talent. They're fully healthy. They've been playing well in the Premier League since it restarted, even though they've had nothing to play for. Mm-hmm. They are my pick to win the Champions League. Dude, De Bruyne might be the best De Bruyne might attacking men I've in the ever world. seen. Like, the Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. He is so good, and he he it looks effortless out there when he he's on the pitch. Bangers with both feet, he cre- he has created more opportunities than Pogba has. Yeah, this and like season. Manchester City, the reason they didn't win the title this year, and the reason why they fell behind was because he missed a couple months of the season mm-hmm. with injury. And with injury, when he goes down, their offense is like Pep yeah. Guardiola cannot like play the same style of football that he wants. I mean, he's the glue for their offense. Oh yeah, for sure. If he's not in the game, they're not going to win. But he is healthy. He's playing well. Man City are going to win the Champions League. That's my thing. 100%. They're going to beat, I would say, due to the way that this bracket is set, all the big teams are on one side. 
I think they're going to beat Atletico Madrid in the final because I see PSG are lucky, and if PSG had Mbappe, I could see it being a PSG Man City mm-hmm. final. But without Mbappe potentially not playing, mm-hmm. it's um, going to be Atletico Madrid and Manchester City in the final. And I think Manchester City are going to take home the Champions League. That's that's my prediction. All right, you heard it here first. And then now we're on to like the biggest segment, like the most like segment that hits closest to us is Sad like news. college sports and just how this semester and is going to be for us. Um. I think college football, if... No fans. No fans. Obviously no fans. Yep. Conference play. Big conference play is going to be a thing, but KU, they did reschedule the season opener with Southern Illinois instead of New Hampshire because New Hampshire suspended all fall sports. Southern Illinois? Where the fuck? FCS. They're D1? FCS. D1 FCS. Where the fuck? I know Northern Illinois was D1. Southern Illinois is too. All right. And the Missouri Valley. Why don't, why don't we play, like, fucking some, like, known school? It's an FCS game. We were already playing New Hampshire. They're just rescheduling it to another FCS school on a last-minute schedule because both of those Boise? teams. Boise? Boise State? Mm, both of those teams that. That would be a good KU game. And something on, like, KU yeah, and except our jerseys. We except we, except we get the shit beat out of us by Boise State. Yeah, for um, but this is just a. We, would, we could hang around Boise This is State. one game that KU's playing because they needed to replace. It's true. Game. It's a cupcake game, season opener. Cupcake game? Yeah. Cupcake game? Okay. But they have not replaced the Boston College game in week two, and Boston College has already said they are not playing out of conference games. ACC is not playing out of conference games this year. And the Big Ten. So it's very interesting to see what is going to happen. Get closer to your mic, bitch. Oh, shit. No, you're fine. It was just yeah. like I was looking at the levels. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But football is tricky. I, basketball, I think, is going to be delayed. Or no fans. No fans, definitely, regardless. Delayed. Maybe. I think it's going to start a month or two. There's going to be a different team without there, their fans. There's going to there's gonna be scheduling oh, yeah. issues. Yeah. There's going to be scheduling issues for sure because teams are – college basketball, it's, it's hard to have a bubble in college sports. Too many games, too many schools. It's not possible to do it. But, Is that a conference play, you think? Maybe. Maybe they do it in conference play, but, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to have a bubble in college football. There's just too many games, and it's like... And you have to have players go to class. It's not exactly. Like stuck in a bubble for a You, can't, like you can't send players... It's hard to send players to go on bubble when some of these schools are still having in-person classes. It's just because they need to go to class. Mm-hmm. As much as the NCAA doesn't want it to be about student-athletes... They have to keep calling them student athletes for their image so they can keep making money off of them. So like they, they, they are not going to want to these kids to not go to class. And it's just like, what do the universities do? Because some universities, know. it's not an NCA issue; it's a university by university issue. New Hampshire canceled all fall sports. They might cancel winter sports. I don't know. I don't. I don't even know where you would go. No one knows. That. No one knows. It's too complicated. It is too complicated. Maybe suspend all sports this year and give them an extra year of eligibility, but then again, some that will cripple some universities. Yeah, it that will. Cripple, like, it will exactly because you got to think about universities that make that money off of gate receipts, not like KU and other big and other power schools who have media deals with conference yeah, play. No, it's the schools that don't have fans, the small schools with those gate receipts and those ticket sales. That buys the teams, pays for the teams' buses, pays for the teams. Like my brother play. plays. Pays my my brother players. is a walk huh? on. Pays for the players. Exactly. So. <laughs> like my brother is Allegedly. a walk on at uh, St. Mary's, which is an NAI school, and that university already doesn't have a lot of money. Without having athletes, that university may not even be able to stay open. Like it's like it, it's going to hit a lot harder not having sports than a lot of people realize for small schools. KU is different. They'll be fine. Power five schools are different. Exactly. Yeah. It's just it's not the, the same. Money. It's not the same with smaller schools. I mean, we've already seen schools are cutting out sports that don't it's not make worth, money. It's not worth spending money to keep it open if you're not making money off of it. Yeah, it's no. just not worth it. So, well, women's sports are going to be canceled? Most likely. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. Right. We don't know. We just don't know. It's just I don't even know. Sports. But if we're going from there to the actual college life aspect of things, it's like... This is even more... I don't even know. Like, let me stand up for a second. My leg's killing me. But, like, if you think about it, um, you got like the bar life and stuff with the, we're, we're talking about even out here in our house is like the social events aspect is do bars or like colleges want to like our college, my classes were just switched. I only have a lot two, of people uh, have two hybrids, one in person where I, the in-person class, 
I go once a week, and then the rest of everything's yeah. online. And first off, fraternities and sororities, they don't want to be the ones to cause an outbreak or to have people hospitalized no. or Hell to no. get their reputation negatively affected by uh, any social events or anything that could lead to people getting sick and it being the cause of them being at either that sorority or fraternity. But now if we're talking about bars and just social events for people who are at college who aren't into uh, Greek life or anything like that is going to be interesting bars. Like, what are you going to do? Everybody going to have a straw and you're going to drink it through your mask? That's one thing I was saying about social events. But it's just... It, it's, it's not... It's just this being in the same area is just another thing. Because if bars aren't that. open, I, what bars are going to stay open? They're, some bars are going to have to shut down. They all have so far. Maybe they don't even reopen ever for the rest of the semester. Unless they serve food, then they can stay open. Because t- they're technically but, a dying restaurant. But they, yeah. they still have to. They still are going to have to. But, they're going to have to operate. Who, what like, are going to close down? Bankruptcy. Capacity. You know what I mean? These, these, this is going to hit them hard. And thing is, is like if you open the bars, you're literally creating a hot spot. It and happened the, already in Lawrence a month ago. It's not. It's not new. And I get you go like, well, I want to go out, and whoever goes out, it's them putting themselves at their own risk. Yes, that's fine. Well, they're but putting the, other people at risk, not just them. Exactly. It's not about exactly. Them. It's about other people. It's about other people. Too many people. That's like when the NFL they proposed this idea that got instantly shut down. They were going to have fans sign COVID waivers, which just will never hold up in any court of law if somebody who didn't sign that waiver gets COVID from someone who did. That no, I completely never agree. Up. It will never hold up. You cannot do anything like that. It's like it's not about you. It's about other people, and we, uh, just, we it's, just don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, my classes mainly are online. A lot of people's mine, are. Mine are completely online. I just, terrible. I just don't even know. I don't know. I, don't get me wrong. I like the online format, but I don't like paying for it. But you don't like paying full price for online tuition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Full out of state tuition on top of. They're gonna have to reimburse us like they did at the. Uh, they're going to have to do some sort of reimbursement or something. They're going to lose a ton of students to either community college or colleges that are way more prepared. Than that they. are offering discounts and more cheaper rates for online school, like K-State is charging less for credit hours. Basically um, the same. They charge it to a technology fee to make up for it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then we're fucked in our situation because we're juniors and zero is a sophomore and we're already into our I'm major. Older than both and, them. Yeah, and it's yeah. Learning, <laughs> we can't go back yeah. to community college and take the basic fucking classes because we already took them and, and it's we're like kind of we, stuck now. I've just decided to I'm going to have $250,000 in debt and I'm just going to live with it. It's pretty fucked. It's pretty fucked. I just hope to make enough money to pay it off one day. Or, or, like or, or, <laughs> or measures are taken by the federal government to alleviate that. Or I just don't have cre- a credit card for seven years. Or measures are taken by the federal government to help <laughs> you out, which, which is their Or those thing. measures taken by me not to pay it back. The problem is, even if they <laughs> do cut tuition for all universities across America... Student debt is an issue that needs gonna, to be addressed by the government. Happens, and gonna Was it actually? No, it needs to be. Needs, student debt is an issue that needs to be addressed by the federal government. It's too, lo- it's too like widespread, and it's too much of an American only issue that really shows that there's problems with charging so much money for education. (laughs) Even though it is higher level education, charging so much money for it is a severe issue and it doesn't help that people are still paying a lot of loans, especially during this time where they can't get jobs because of COVID. Doesn't help at all. It's an issue. That's a debate for another day. That's a debate for another another. day. Oh, we're about an hour and 13 minutes in the I think we've covered everything. We've covered everything on our agenda. Um, I'm pretty... Good with this right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about okay. y'all. If you guys have anything else, uh, this is a really good first episode. I put yeah. it in sports is back. I might just put the date. I'm hoping to live stream these maybe at least once a week. Yeah. But I want to have the podcast also once a week. Maybe I film these twice a week, thirty minutes, and then make that into one podcast that's forty five yeah. minutes. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know. I really don't know. We don't know anything about anything that's going on. We're just kind of going with the flow. Going that's all with the thing. Do. I just got to edit this now. I'll keep this stream. Wait, wait, fuck. Wow. Pass me my fucking uh, my, uh, hard drive. Where is your hard drive? Oh, it's right here. There you go, kid. We're going to end this with the fucking intro. Because I didn't start this. So if you're watching this on the podcast, you obviously won't fucking hear this. If I don't see you, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Bye.